guys, Mr. Backward here. This is part one of lesson 3.5. We're going to be doing some exponential and logarithmic application problems. Just one objective for this video. We're going to use exponential and logarithmic models to solve real life problems. These are the five most common type of models that use either exponentials or logarithms. So we've got exponential growth, exponential decay. We've got a Gaussian model a logistic growth, and a logarithmic model. If we start taking a look at the graphs of some of these models, first one over here, exponential growth, we can see that on the left-hand side of the graph, the increase is very, very minimal. But as we move along the x-axis, our graph starts to increase a lot more rapidly. Exponential decay is almost exactly the opposite. There's a negative on the x, so that's a y-axis reflection. So this is decreasing very rapidly at first, and then as we move along that x-axis, there's a very minimal change. Taking a look at a couple more graphs for this Gaussian model. If you've ever heard of a bell curve, that's essentially what's happening here. And if we're looking at this logistic growth, it's flat on the ends, but we can see there's this increase in the middle. And our last graphs that we're taking a look at, there's a natural log and a common base 10 log. Okay, these are both logarithmic growth models. So we can see they're both increasing very rapidly at first, and then as we move to the right along that x-axis, our graphs start to flatten out. So here's the first example we're gonna run through. Okay, we're given a population model for a city. We've got P equals 95,300 times E raised to the power of 0.055T. And what we wanna do with this model is we wanna figure out when our population is gonna reach 150,000. We're gonna start off by finding our answer algebraically, and then we're gonna check our answer using a graph. So this p-value on the left-hand side is our population, and we're trying to figure out when that population is 150,000. So I'm just gonna replace the p on the left-hand side with 150,000 equals 95,300 times e raised to the point 055t power. Now we're trying to solve for t. We're trying to get t all by itself. So what we'll wanna do is move everything else over to the other side, starting with this 95,300. And I'm actually gonna wait on typing this stuff into my calculator, otherwise we're gonna run into some rounding issues later on. So now our fraction on the left-hand side says 150,000 over 95,300 equals e to the 0.055t power. Now we have to get rid of this e exponential using some different properties that we've talked about throughout this chapter. I think the best way to do this is going to be to rewrite it in logarithmic form. Since this is a base e exponential, we're gonna be using a base e logarithm or a natural log. So I would rewrite this one as the natural log of our big fraction that we've got, 150,000 over 95,300 equals 0.055t. And then all we have to do in order to get t all by itself is divide by that 0.055 on both sides. Now to get our answer, I'm gonna use a calculator, so I'm gonna type this in piece by piece. We've got the natural log of 150,000 divided by that 95,300. I'm gonna go ahead and get a decimal answer there, so we get 0.454 if we were to round it off, but then we have to divide by our 0.055, so we end up with a t value of about 8.25. So if we're trying to figure out what year we reached 150,000, well, it says earlier that a t-value of zero means that we're talking about 1996. Well, this is eight and a quarter years later, so if we add eight years to this 1996, we reached a population of 150,000 in the year 2004. To check our answer graphically, I've got that original population model typed into my graphing calculator. I'm using an x variable instead of a t variable, just because that's what we're used to dealing with on our graphing calculators. I also came up with another equation. We're trying to figure out where this is equal to 150,000. So I'm just gonna put a flat horizontal line in my graph at 150,000. Now before we graph this out, we're gonna have to change our window a little bit we're talking about y values that end up in the hundreds of thousands. We're looking for 150,000, so I went just a little bit beyond that. I went up to 155,000. 
Now if I graph this out, that blue one represents our growth model. That red one is that flat horizontal line that I put at 150,000. To figure out the solution, what we're looking for is that intersection point between our two lines. So I'm going to go second calc right above that trace. There's an option to find the intersect. So that's number five. It asks us to be on the first curve. So right now, my cursor is on the blue curve. So I'm just going to hit enter. Now it wants me on the second curve. So I make sure that my cursor is on the red line. Hit enter again. It lets us take a guess. So I can arrow over to try to find that intersection point if I want to, but we don't have to do that. We can just hit enter one more time and it'll spit out the answer for us. Okay? And we get the same answer. It's about eight and a quarter when we get to that Y value of 150,000. Taking a look at our next example, we're gonna do a little carbon dating to figure out how old a recently discovered fossil is. So when you're doing carbon dating, you'll look at the ratio of carbon 14 atoms to carbon 12 atoms we're given an R value of 1 over 10 to the 13th power. Our carbon dating model says R equals 1 over 10 to the 12th power times E to the power of negative T divided by 8,223. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this R value that we were given and just plug it in for R. So we've got 1 over 10 to the 13th power equals 1 over 10 to the 12th power times E to the power of negative T divided by 8,223. Now this is a lot like that last model where we we're trying to get t all by itself. Right now we've got one divided by 10 to the 12th power. So in order to move that, what I'm gonna do is multiply by 10 to the 12th power so that those things cancel out. Now what's gonna happen here with this 10 to the 12th times one over 10 to the 13th, 12 of these tens will cancel out with 12 of the tens on bottom, but we still get one over 10 because there's one 10 left over, equals e to the negative t divided by 8,223. And again, I think we're gonna rewrite this one as a logarithmic problem. This is a base e exponential, so when we rewrite it, it'll be a natural log. So natural log of one over 10 equals negative t divided by 8,223. Now in order to move that divided by 8,223, we'll end up multiplying to get those things to cancel out. So then our equation says 8,223 times the natural log of one over 10 equals negative T. I'm gonna type this left-hand side into my calculator to get a decimal approximation. So 8,223 times the natural log of one divided by 10. Hit enter, we get negative 18,934 equals our negative t. So if we wanna get rid of these negatives, we're just going to divide both sides by negative one. So this fossil that we found is approximately 18,934 years old. For this last example, we're gonna say that we're setting up a savings account to raise some money to pay for college. So here's what we wanna do. We wanna figure out the amount of money, our principal amount that we have to start with if we're going to invest at a rate of 8%, compounded quarterly, and in 18 years we want to end up with $100,000. So if we use that compound interest formula, this $100,000 is the A value, the amount of money we wanna have, equals we're trying to find our principal that we're gonna start with. We've got one plus, remember with this R value, we need to take this percent and convert it over into a decimal, so it's 0 0.08. If we're compounding quarterly, our N value is four to the power of, again, our N value is four, and our time frame is going to be 18 years. Now before I start doing any solving, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. So we've got 100,000 equals P times, if we combine this stuff inside of the parentheses, we get 1.02. If we multiply the four and the 18 together on the power, we get 72. Now really, all we have to do to get our P value all by itself is divide by this 1.02 to the 72nd power. Those will cancel out. We'll have to do the same thing to the other side. And then I think I'm gonna type this one into my calculator. 
In order to get the order of operations to work out correctly, I'm going to throw some parentheses in here. So we're going to take 100,000 divided by 1.02 raised to the 72nd power. Hit enter and we get $24,031.87. So after 18 years of growth, if we want to end up with $100,000 using the constraints that we were given, we need to start with just over $24,000. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.